Tomorrow, the 12th annual Iowa Rose Festival opens in State Center, Iowa. It does run tomorrow through Sunday, and there are some special features this year. We are going to have an opportunity to meet the uh, 1970 uh, Rose Festival Queen candidates in a minute and the 1969 Queen. But before we do that, let's hear more about the festival from Jim Jorgensen. He's the uh, parade co-chairman. And I think we want to know a little bit before we even get into this year's activities as to how the festival started, the flowers around us, the garden. Uh, Dorcas, yes, this started about uh, in 1959. This was the, uh, the brainchild, the idea of a Mrs. W.A. Norcross from Cedar Falls. Uh, having visited State Center and also being a member of the Iowa Rose Society, it was decided and thought to be a good idea that we should have a town in State Center named as the Rose Capital of Iowa. And it was through the efforts of Mrs. Norcross and the Iowa Rose Society that uh, bestowed that uh, title on State Center. And so this, it started at that time, and I assume that you are adding uh, roses to it uh, continually and perhaps to other parts of town. Oh yes, and every year we have to uh, replace some of the roses that don't make it through the winter and uh, through the efforts of organizations here in town and uh, individual efforts why I think the whole community takes a pride in our rose garden and our roses in the... And I think this year probably has been hard on them at various times because some of the storms have uh, uh, not been the simplest thing but they have been worked on and uh, well taken care of. What else is involved with the, in addition to just being able to see the flowers as far as the Rose Festival is concerned? Well, we've got quite a, quite a deal planned for us now, starting tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, tomorrow night we have the uh, a horse show out at the city park. Uh, we have a teen dance, and uh, we have a two-bit review. This is being put on by some teenagers from a high school in Cedar Rapids. They were here last year, and they put on a marvelous show, just really great. Uh, Saturday, of course, we've got the parade at 1030 which I am co-chairman of, and uh, we're going to have a real good time. We've got some outstanding drum and bugle corps coming in from as far as Clinton. And uh, later that afternoon, they're going to put on an exhibition out at the local high school as to uh, an exhibition drum and bugle corps contest. Now, this is the first time you've had this, isn't it? Yes, this is kind of a result of putting together the parade and we find that it's somewhat difficult in the summertime in as much as uh, high school bands are not, uh, shall we say, functioning in the summertime. Uh, uniforms are at the cleaners and the band directors on vacation. So we find that a parade is outstanding if we can have marching units. And uh, so we solicited and we've got these drum and bugle corps that are going to come in and help us make an outstanding parade along with other local drill teams and uh, local efforts uh, from the community as far as floats and bands and kids and we're gonna have a good time. Well now how many units are in that? I think it's about nine aren't there? We have approximately eight or nine drum and bugle corps and color guard units that belong to the Iowa Uniform Groups Association. Now hopefully next year we can get perhaps twice as many of these units in here and hold an official sanctioned Iowa Uniform Groups drum and bugle corps contest along with our rose festival that would be real nice i hope so now going on to saturday evening and and uh, the activities we will have a band concert saturday evening uh, we have a speaker in the rose garden uh, saturday afternoon after the parade uh, we will have the coronation of the 1970 rose queen that saturday afternoon as i said uh, four o'clock we will have the drum and bugle corps exhibition at 8 o'clock, we will have the Iowa String Quartet, which will perform at the St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in town. Uh, this is a group of uh, four gentlemen from, I believe it's Iowa City. And they have been on a world tour, and it's something different. We hope to offer something to everybody. So the Iowa String Quartet will be here on Saturday evening. And then on Sunday, uh, it seems like these tractor pulls are beginning to be real exciting to people. So the Central Iowa JCs here in town will be putting on the tractor pull at 1 o'clock on Sunday.
So there's going to be a little of everything for somebody. Right, and we have just, uh, I think, uh, slightly gone over part of the things that are important because I think there's probably, oh, a carnival, and if I see that there's a square dance and right. some of these things, and so right. they'll have to get the program and come to get the rest right. of it. Right, right. Now, I'm wondering if we shouldn't go ahead and meet some of the, the uh, girls, but before we do, just in case uh, well, I don't get back, uh, it's very nice of you to uh, invite us over, and I hope that the parade goes well. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the 1969 uh, Rose Queen is Erin Maui, and she is from State Center, and your reign is almost over. Yes, it will be on Saturday. And what have you been doing this last year? I've been in four or five parades. We had an unsuccessful attempt at one just Friday afternoon, an unsuccessful attempt at Dr. Max <laughs> and all kinds of things. Right now, where do you go to school? I go to Iowa State University in Ames. Mm -hmm. And your parents? Mr. and Mrs. Dan Malloy of State Center. And so that actually Saturday afternoon you will be giving over your crown to uh, one of the other girls that we're meeting. Yes. And I'm sure that you've had a good year and we'll be glad to pass it on. I have. It's really been fun. Good. Now, uh, these are the five finalists. And in, no one knows at this particular point uh, which one will be the Rose Queen. But our five finalists start with Janet uh, Jackson. Yes, that's right. From Melbourne. Yeah. Your parents? Mr. and Mrs. Sam Jackson. Now, what are you going to be doing next year? Well, I hope to find a job, <laughs> make some money. <laughs> Any particular field or just? Um... Secretarial. Well, lots of luck and lots of luck tomorrow. Thanks a lot. And Lynn uh, Shepard? Shaper. Shaper. And you are from? State Center. And your parents? Mr. and Mrs. Reuben Shaper of State Center. Now, what are you going to do next year? I'm going to be going to nursing school on Des Moines Methodist. Mm -hmm. I'm a Methodist. Now, actually, all of you are seniors. Yes. Do you have to be seniors to be able to enter the contest? We don't have to be, but they usually are. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I say good luck to all of you. Uh, then there's uh, Becky Cooper, right? That's right. And where are you from, Becky? I'm from Melbourne. And your parents? Mr. and Mrs. Gary Cooper. And what are you going to do next year? Uh, I'm going to go to Marshalltown Community College. It's a small junior college there. And do you have any idea what you want to study eventually or not? Uh, not really. Maybe some sort of journalism. Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see whether you have an active here, depending on what happens on uh, Saturday. That's right. <laughs> right. And thank you. Thank and you. then um, it's Patty Gray, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> and now State Center happens to be your home. Yeah. Well, I live outside of State Center on a small farm. Mm -hmm. And your parents? Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Roger Gray. And what are you going to do next year? I'm going to go on to Iowa State and major in psychology. Uh -huh. And so uh, do you anticipate uh, working this summer uh, in addition to the hopes of the queen? No, I'm just staying at home working for my dad. Oh, just staying home yeah. working for your dad on the farm. <laughs> Good. And then finally we have Becky Davis, mm -hmm. right? Right. And you from State Center. Mm -hmm. And your parents? Mr. and Mrs. Ed Davis. And what are you doing next year? I'm going to go to Iowa State. Studying what? Psychology. And uh, as far as part of your activities in the summer, are you working? What are you doing? Yeah, I teach swimming lessons in lifeguard. How did you get off now? Well, it hasn't started yet. It starts next Tuesday. <laughs> and so but you're not really in too bad a shape. Mm -hmm. I'm on vacation. Well, uh, as far as that's, I hope that, or I know that at least one of the five of them will be. <laughs> and they just, we just all got wet. <laughs> <laughs> because the wind puts the fountain in this direction. But that's part of the hazards of it. I'm uh, going for a queen or something they're, like that. They're young. They can take it. <laughs> well, what about us? <laughs> yeah. It's warm enough. I don't think it'll make any difference. Right. Now, um, do you have the listing there of actually the drum and bugle chorus? Or should we, the other thing is, is, are there any of the roses that you are real aware of as far as the names uh, that people might want to look for as special ones? Well. When it comes to the actual names of the roses and their derivations, uh, Dorcas, I'm I'll leave that up to some more experts that are a little more qualified than I. Although we have roses here that are replaced every year and they're donated by nurseries from all over the United States. And so we get just a vast variety of roses that many people don't have that can be seen here. 
Right, and I noticed that many of them have a sign on them of the All-American Selection, so that if you want to see some of those, I'm sure that you can, in addition to seeing the Queens, seeing the Drum and Bugle Corps exhibition on Saturday afternoon, and thank you very much, Jim Jorgensen, uh, Parade Co-Chairman, for the Rose Festival that will be held in State Center beginning tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, girls.